this is the dyno that we've built put together to try to test Model T engines. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish here is is finding out whether changes of heads or cams or carburetors or types of ignitions uh, that sort of thing makes an impact on how a Model T performs and we've went through quite a process to get to this point in time capturing data to be able to analyze to say yes if I bolt a head on it makes an improvement and and if I change out a manifold or a carburetor it really didn't seem to have any significant impact so our dyno consists of a motor that we acquired that was recently rebuilt it's a uh, it's a standard Model T uh, engine with a Model T high head on it uh, Model T exhaust and intake manifold running an NH carburetor uh, we do run uh, a distributor on it at this point in time that has a set of fly weights in it so we know what the advance is on that distributor through the range of the RPM uh, uh, so you'll notice that we do have a distributor uh, I hope you enjoy my uh, throttle mechanism this is how I'll accelerate or decelerate the engine the air tube here is strictly uh, to get the heat uh, away this creates a lot of heat and you'll notice that our radiators mounted off to the side so we can access to the front of the engine for changing cams or whatever kind of work we want to do it also makes it more accessible for taking an engine in and out I've got this piece of pipe up here just to get the air up above and we've got a device here made by X-Tech which is capturing recording the barometric pressure, the humidity, and the temperature that the air is seen as it goes into the carburetor. Uh, we've got a coil box on here. Eventually we'd like to put a set of Model T coils on here and, and, and see if we can see any comparative difference between distributor versus coils. Uh, the Taylor water break here that uh, we'll get into more information here in a bit on uh, is nothing more than a way of uh, measuring the torque. A uh, little control box on the back which has a starter switch and on off switch for the motor and it rattles horribly and it will be relocated. Uh, this is a works in progress. Uh, you'll notice that there are seat clamps holding uh, different pieces on and uh, so like I said it's a work in progress. Uh, do we really want that mounted here and that sort of thing so it makes it easy to change out. But I'm going to get ready and we're going to start the dyno up and basically all I'll do is I'll get it I'll get the engine running I'll uh, open up a water valve back here on the back fill up the brake uh, come up here and give it full throttle we've got a computer over here in the background that'll capture that data show us what the torque is uh, and read the uh, read the performance of the engine 12 times a second through the course of the run at the end of it we'll be able to take that data and should be able to analyze it and know exactly what maximum torque was, maximum horsepower, at what RPM and how the engine performed through the course of a run. We're going to start off at about 850-900 RPM is, is, is where our uh, data starts gathering and we'll run it up to 2000 RPM. Typically most of us will never run, never run our engines above 2000. So uh, I'm fixing to start it up here. Okay, I'm going to get her started here. Give it a little gas, hit the choke. I'm going to let it warm up. We found that we need to get it up to 190 degrees. So I've got a thermometer over here on the side that I'm picking up out of the discharge of the water. While I'm waiting for it to water up, I just want to verify that we've got our distributor set at the advanced uh, set where we want it right at this time. So I'm going to use a timing light. Twelve, 12 degrees. We've got 12 degrees advance on it. That's where we're. That's where we're starting out at. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little water, get a little water in the dyno. 
you might hear the engine lug down a little bit. And I'm going to run it up a little bit of speed in here just to get it heated up. So this will take, take a couple of minutes, so I'll be back with you. Okay, I've got it up to temperature. I've got water in my dyno. I'm going to go ahead and speed it. I'm going to open the throttle all the way up. And then I'm going to shut off my water supply and open up a valve on here to let the water thin out of the dyno. This takes several minutes to make a run, so here we go. Okay, go ahead and start recording. So our computer now is capturing a log file reading out what's happening at the RPM versus the torque. And like I said, this takes, this will probably take a couple of minutes to get done, so enjoy the motor running. About this dyno, it's going uphill all the time. We're lucky if we can get about three runs to a gallon of gas. She's working. <laughs> Looking over at the computer monitor, I can see that we're pulling about 80, 85, 80 pounds of torque right now. And we're, well now we're about 77 pounds of torque, 1300 RPM. I was, earlier I was looking over at it and seeing 85, 86 pounds when we first started. We're starting to gain RPM up. I'll use this little handheld tack and I'll shut it, or time right, and I'll shut it down when we get to 2,000 RPM, a little over. my vent valve and I opened it up with water. The dyno gets rather hot. I wouldn't want to hold my hand on that too awful long. It gets rather warm during the course of a run. So I'll run fresh water through it. And what we'll do is we'll do back-to-back -back runs, uh, 10 runs, and take that information of those 10 runs and after we've captured the data, uh, work with that data and average out those 10 runs to make a determination of, of did we see an improvement, did we not see an improvement over any changes that we may or may not made. Like I said, right now we've basically got a stock Henry Ford motor with a distributor and I don't think I mentioned it does have aluminum pistons in it and they're 30 to one, or 30 over thousands. Other than that, basic stock. Engine's got the transmission complete, the bands are in it. Uh, I don't have a starter on it and I don't have a, uh, a generator. Those are just plugged off uh, mainly because I get change motors in and out. Uh, we'll get in, I do start it with an auxiliary starter and we'll get into that uh, here in a little bit, what, uh, a little more detail when we start talking about the dyno specifically. 